Okay, thanks. Great. Either or. Okay, great. Hi, this is Dan. Can you hear me? Hi, Dan. I can. How are you? I'm great, Candy. Nice to talk to you. You too. Thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciate it, Doctor. So can you tell us about the Science Channel special you're hosting, Death on a Comet, the Rosetta Mission? Yeah, this is uh, the end of an uh, incredible era in space travel. The Rosetta mission has been a 12-year mission. It launched in 2004. It flew through space for 10 years to catch up to a comet, and then it's been orbiting this comet, taking pictures of it, sending them back to Earth, smelling the, the things that come off of that comet, analyzing those chemicals, reporting back to Earth. And it's been a, a hugely successful mission, the most ambitious mission ever by the European Space Agency, which is the European equivalent to NASA. And uh, the mission is coming to an end because, uh, in a nutshell, the spacecraft is following a comet, and that comet is now moving away from the sun. And it, because the spacecraft is solar powered, it's going to die. And so rather than have it just die floating next to a comet, they're going to deliberately fly it into the surface of the comet, taking pictures, uh, taking, you know, analyzing the chemicals, taking measurements all the way down until they reach the surface, sending all that information back. And then when it hits the surface, it's going to shut down forever and sit lifeless on this comet for millions of years until it's discovered by an alien race someday down the road. And what was the ultimate goal of this 12 year experiment? Well, I mean, the, the, the whole point was to understand comets better. Um, and comets are interesting on their own because they're these weird things that, you know, they're, they're sort of like boring ice balls for most of their life. And then every once in a while, one will go past the sun and light up with a big tail and then go back out into space and become boring again. <laughs> and, uh, and so understanding what they're made of is interesting in its own right. But the thing about comets is that they are like little time capsules from the earliest solar system. So before the sun lit up and before the, the Earth got made and all that stuff, there were chemicals out here. And everything that we have now has to be made from the chemicals that were there originally. And these, these comets are like little samples of what was here originally. And so if you can smell, you know, if you can touch a comet and see what it's made of, you get an indication of where we come from. You get an indication of what those Lego bricks were in the big bucket of life before life ever evolved. And what role did they have in the evolution of life on Earth? Well, that's the big question is, does, does life on Earth have to come from comets? And so the reason that question uh, is interesting is because Earth, for weird reasons, has way too much water. It, it's hard to explain where all the water came from on Earth. And one place you can find water in space is in comets. They're basically dirty snowballs. So if you had a comet that crashed into the Earth a long time ago and melted, maybe that's where our water came from. So that's a possibility that they've been looking at. And what they've been analyzing is the chemical structure of the water on comets and comparing it to the chemical structure of the water here on Earth. And the idea was to look at what's called the isotopes and to see whether they match. And the hope was if we find out that this comet has the same water signature as the water on Earth, that is a strong uh, indication that the water on Earth came from a comet and that comets ultimately are responsible for water and of course life evolved in water. However, one of the things this mission has reported is that the Earth on that comet and the, or sorry, the water on that comet and the water on Earth don't match. And so we have to find some other explanation for where the water on Earth comes from. Comets did not, uh, at least from what we know now, uh, it doesn't seem like comets are the origin of water on Earth. So life on Earth, which depended on the water, has some other interesting story that we've still got to piece together. And I heard that comets don't smell too great. Yeah, that's the funny thing, too, is as you check out these chemicals and, and what they are, I mean, you can put them through a, you know, a, you can put them into a table of chemicals and you can see their chemical formulas, but 
you know, every day we interact with chemicals on Earth with our noses, and we know what they smell like. If there's a strong sulfur compound here on Earth, it smells like rotten eggs. Well, because there are sulfur compounds on this comet, there's nobody there to smell them, but the scientists can help us understand by saying, if you were there, you would smell ammonia. You would smell sulfur. It would smell like rotten eggs. It wouldn't smell all that nice. I personally keep getting caught up in the idea that if you were trying to smell the comet, you'd be in space and you'd die because your lungs would explode and your blood would boil. So that's, that's maybe not the best way to go about it. Maybe it's better for them just to tell us what the chemicals are and what it would smell like. I completely agree with you. And do you have any additional information I can share with us? Yeah, I mean, this mission is just, it's a, it's a feel-good story in a time where there's so much to be stressed about. You know, it, it, the, it, it, the 21st century has been a whirlwind. So much has been going on, and I think that a lot of people miss out on one of the most exciting sets of accomplishments that humanity has done in the last couple decades, and that is to send these charismatic robots out into space on real live missions to check things out. We have a, something driving around on Mars, you know, a couple things driving around on Mars. We have a spacecraft that's orbiting Jupiter now. We have a, a, a spacecraft that just went zipping past Pluto and took amazing pictures of it. And these are all robots that can be our eyes and our ears and our noses in space. And they're letting us see things that we've never seen as humans before. And so it's just in our lifetimes now in this Rosetta mission in the last two years that we've gotten a good close look at what a comet looks like. And that's something that we'll take for granted for decades. This will be, you know, everybody will know what a comet looks like, but we just figured it out. And, and I think that uh, it's just a great time to be alive. Things like this just really inspire me and make me feel good about having kids right now and make me feel really hopeful for the future. It's just really exciting and happy. Definitely. And where can we go for more information and how can viewers watch Death on a Comet, the Rosetta mission? So Death on a Comet, the Rosetta mission, is going to air on the Science Channel at 10 p.m. Pacific and 10 p.m. Eastern on Friday, September 30th. So if you do one thing with your week, make sure it's tuning in for that special because it's, really, it's going to be spectacular. We've been working on it for months, and the day of the crash is going to be so filled with uh, drama and, and just emotion, and these scientists are going to see their baby die. Uh, it, it's going to be a big day, and it's going to be historically important. And I think a lot of people are going to miss out on it because there's a lot of other stuff that's distracting people. But um, especially if you have kids and you want them to, to really know how exciting a time it is to be alive right now, I really think this is just a great use of your time. Absolutely. I'm definitely looking forward to it. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Dan. I really appreciate you taking time out of your busy schedule to speak with me today. Have a great afternoon. A, thank you so much, Candace. I appreciate it. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Live TV. Here we go. Now we're playing.